hello 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 there good evening and thank you for joining me today i hope you've had a wonderful week for some it's half term for others they've gone back to uh, kids have gone back to school but it's a great pleasure to be here again today uh, after a break last week due to some of our sin circumstances really so it's i'm i'm happy to be back again here today and today, oh, I'll talk about who I am first. For those who are joining us for the first time, my name is Pauline Lehman. I'm the founder of Star Richards Community Initiative. It's a charity with a mission to raise aspirations for young black people and to break the cycle of a prevailing pupil under achievement in education amongst BME communities, as well as promote, promoting the well-being of BME children and their families. Um, uh, my passion is to help parents raise high achieving children. So today we're going to be talking about another aspect that I think is very, very vital for raising up great kids, raising up well adjusted children. Now, I must emphasize that parenting is the foundation for everything. It's the bedrock for raising up children who are well adjusted, who are well mannered, who go on to succeed in school, who go on to succeed at anything they set their hands on. You know, so parenting is really, really crucial. And that is why now and again, in addition to educational aspects of of our children, we talk about um, parenting. So today we're going to be talking about core family values core family values and we're going to be looking at why it's important for us as parents to have core family values you know and how they help us and how we can actually instill those values in our children thank you very much for joining please uh, leave a comment so i know uh, who is there thanks for joining us Yes, so why is it important in our day and age, in the generation in which we live, generation of technology, uh, technology exposes our children to all sort of voices. They hear lots of mixed messages. They hear things that come to dilute the values we teach them. They hear things out there on social media that dilutes the, the, the faith, uh, uh, beliefs that we put in our children. There are many, many voices and it's really easy for children to be tossed around by all sorts of belief systems. So it's really important. So there's a war of values. It's a family values, a faith values, a secular values, all sorts of values. So we live in a generation in which we can't afford to raise children without being sure ourselves of what the values are that we want to pass on to them. So today, thanks for joining. Today, we're talking about core family values. Now, what are values and why do we as parents need to be sure of the values that we stand for, that we hold on to, that are core values, and to be able to pass them on to our children. So values are simply the principles by which a person lives. Okay. So the principle by which a person lives and they make up your identity. So your values, the value system, which is your, your belief system eventually makes up you. And it's of your value system, the, the, the values that you pass on to your children that will guide them, that will help them have a sense of identity, a sense of who they are, a sense of what they, they believe in, what they stand for. Everybody out there in our day and age believes in something. They stand for something. The religious people stand for something. The secular people stand for something. The atheists stand for something. So everyone stands for something. And it's therefore important that we have values that we intentionally want to pass on to our children. Now, when we see what is happening, children are sweet children, you know, from, from, from disadvantaged and BME communities getting involved in all sorts of things out there. Uh, in the month of, I think it was March, 
We had the, the, the knife crimes in London. There are gangs. There's all sort of things that children get involved in. Now you wonder, how do these children get involved in these things if they have really strong values? I'm not saying when you instill strong values, it won't happen. But I believe that when a parent has got the strong values and you're parenting with love, uh, your child is very likely to hold on to those values and not be swayed by pressure from peers. So it's really, really important to have these values instilled in our children. These values will guide them when they are out there, you know, with their peers. The values will guide them in the decisions they make, in the choices they make, in helping them to be confident in who they are because they're surrounded by people with lots of different belief systems that are very, very confident in what they believe in. So it's important that we instill these values. So what are the sort of, whose responsibility is it? Is it the government's? You know, some people blame the government, some people blame the school system for failing parents. You know, some people blame social services. So people blame some, but I believe as parents, we need to take responsibility for the values we want to teach our children. Because bear in mind, when children go to school, they're being taught by teachers who have different values, who have beliefs that are not necessarily the beliefs of your family. So you can't leave that role in the hands of the teacher. You can leave that role, that role in the hands of the social workers, in the hands of people that you're, you know, are in your, uh, that take care of your children for a short while. So you need to be sure of the values you want to establish or instill in your children. So what are the different va family values that we can have? For example, we could be a family that values education. It could be a family that values, you know, respect. You know, there are many different areas of values. Now, I want us to be careful as parents because when working with parents, I've come across, you know, parents with very, very interesting value systems. Some parents, you know, based on the, the culture or the background they come from, for example, may say that, uh, a child chewing gum is disrespectful, for example. Now, I'm not talking about the sort of values. I'm talking about core values that gives your child a sense of identity, a sense of knowing who they are and actually helps them make right choices and right decisions. Values that affect their future outcomes. Hello, uh, Omar Labake. Thank you very much for joining and thank you everyone who has joined so far. This is a really, really crucial topic, uh, core family values. Please feel free to share the video. If you find it useful, you know there's someone who's going to be blessed. Please feel free to help us reach as many people as possible by sharing. So as we look at, as we share these different areas, you know, in which you can come up with values, um, please think about yourself. Think about your situation. And I do encourage parents to have similar values, to stand for the same thing, because children know how to play up parents when they have they 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 they, they see that they stand for slightly different things. They play one parent against the other to have their way. So it's important as spouses for parents or for 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 people in two parent homes, yes, to sit down and put down what are the values. We want to instill in our children. So that is the starting point. So identify values you want to instill in your child or children in the different areas. So the first area is spiritual. Now, what are the spiritual values you want to instill in your child? If you're a Christian, for example, what are the Christian values? You know, because different Christians have different things they hold on to. So what are the core aspects that you want to pass on to your child, that you want your child to leave home at age 18 and take away with them and they can pass it on to the next generation? It's prayer to the, teach them to pray every day, teach them to read the Bible every day, teach them maybe to fast, teach them to do spiritual activity teach them the value of, you know, attending, you know, church, for example, teach them the value of having Christian friends that are like-minded 
and so on. Teach them decency, modesty, those core Christian values. So it's our responsibility to ensure that our children have solid spiritual values because there are lots, as we said before, lots of very different, different value systems out there. And without a solid, you know, spiritual value system, children will be swayed by all sort of beliefs, you know, that are out there um, in the day and age in which we live. So that's the first area. The next is the social values. What are the so social values that your children will need? We know that um, social skills are very, very important in the day and age in which we live. Social skills are proving to be, you know, almost in par on par or even higher than grades for children to be able to grow up as well-adjusted, you know, human beings. They need to have strong social values. So it could be integrity, you know, it will be respect. We know how leaders fall due to lack of integrity. So we want to teach them integrity. We want to teach them respect. We want to teach them empathy, kindness, forgiveness, you know, hard work, honesty. So these, you know, and, and lots more. So as, as we, we discuss this, you know, I want you to be thinking, what are those values? Because if you don't have, you know, someone says a feeling, a uh, Failing to plan is planning to fail. So you need to plan for what you want to teach your children, what values you want to instill in them, so that you can then take action and start to instill those values in them. And then we've got relationship values. How to nurture good relationships is relationships within the family, valuing family. Family comes before, comes first before friends. You know, um, relationship with Parents, relationship with siblings is so vital. This is really so important. A lot of children go on to university and don't want to come back home because that value, you know, of family relationship, of family being being first, have not been instilled. Of maintaining and nurturing good relationships. A lot of people are struggling, even as adults, because they lack skills to be able to nurture and maintain very good relationships. And then it could be financial values. Financial values, we teach our children to live within their means and, you know, they need to see us living within our means as well. That, you know, it's important to avoid debt. A lot of people go through university, start life with lots of debt, and then they keep sinking and sinking and sinking in the valley of debt. So we need to teach our children about delayed gratification. Yes, you go out, there are a lot of things to buy, lots of beautiful clothes and shoes, lots of things you want to buy, but you can't buy everything. You must be able to live according to your means. We need to teach them the, the value of hard work, the value of generosity, the value of participation, contribution, giving back, because it is people who give back will leave a mark in society and that brings fulfillment. So those are some of the values. Please feel free to add on some values you think I've left out. And the most important thing is to sit down and lay down those values on paper so that you can start to work on strategies for implementing or teaching these values to your children. Now we're going to be looking at strategies to help us instill these values in our children's lives. So the first thing, I believe that um, you can't teach your child anything effectively if you do not have a relationship with them. I talk a lot about relationship because they cannot be influenced without relationship. So the starting point is to ensure that you nurture a good relationship with your child, that you make time for your child to talk to your child to have fun with your child, you know, to, 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 to relate with them in a respectful, you know, with mutual respect, in a friendly way, in a playful way, so that, you, you know, they can be open to actually receive from you. So that is the starting point. Have a good relationship with your child. Hello, Keji. Thanks for joining. Hope you're doing well. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today. Please, again, as I said, feel free to share the video. I believe it's going to help one or two people out there. 
Now, the second thing is to talk about your values. So you, you may have values, but you don't talk about them. And when a child does something contrary to the values, a lot of parents are very quick to discipline them, to punish them. You know, they get very angry, but you haven't taught them the value. So that's why I said the starting point, put those values down so that you can then strategically and intentionally start to teach them. So talk about your values. Talk about why your values are important to you. Now, a lot of times we tell our children the things they should do or the things they shouldn't do, but we don't tell them why it's important. Hello, Precious. Thanks for joining. Appreciating each other within the family. Absolutely. So valuing family relationships. Thanks, Skeji, for that. So we need to tell children why they should or why this value is important so that they understand that we're not just telling them to do things for no reason, and we want to carry them along. We want them to own these values. So they need to understand why these values are important to them. Now, we could go further by actually talking to them about how our values have helped us. So think about a value. Think about how it's helped you. Maybe you were in a situation before you developed, you came up with this value, you were messed up, and then you know, you adopted this value, how it's helped you, how it's guided you in making certain decisions that have been life-changing. Share the outcome with them. Children love to hear our stories. They love to hear us, you know, talk about even our failures, even our weaknesses. It makes us look human to them. So let's not hesitate to talk to them about how our values have helped us. Number four, Leave out your values. Can't emphasize this. Children learn by watching rather than the things we tell them. So you talk to them about the values and actually leave it out. Actually model it. We are role models for our children. And a lot of times, even without telling them what the values are, the things they see mommy do or the things they see daddy do all the time, they take it as that is our family value. So we need to leave out our value and not just tell them what our values are. And five, um, encourage them by pointing out moments or, 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 or moments when they've actually lived out that value. So if one of the values if you teach them, you actually see them doing what you told them to do or not to do, then acknowledge it. Encourage them. Say, oh, well done. You know, we were talking about this, that it's not right for children of God to do this or to do that. I can see that you've done it. So well done. Keep it up. That way they seek to actually leave out the things that we tell them to do or not to do. And finally, number six, we could read books that are watch movies that highlight your core values. You know, there are quite a good number of movies out there that you can watch, you know, with your children, you can watch as a family, you know, that will help teach these values. I find it really powerful when we hear or children hear what we tell them from someone else. So it could be a mentor. If you have a mentor, a family friend, you know, that you think they respect and that they will receive, you know, or they like to talk to, uh, that they're open to receive from, then connect them together, you know, so that they can impact those values. So it's really important who uh, we send our children to. Do they have similar values to us? So those are the things we need to be watching out for so that you don't teach your children one value and your friend or your neighbor is teaching your children something else. So it's really, really important to ensure that we protect these children. It's our responsibility as parents to teach their values and to ensure that we protect them from things that will be detrimental to them as they grow up. <coughs> so I've shared here six things that we can do as parents to be able to instill core values in our children. I'm going to run through them really, really quickly again before we finish off. If you're just joining, please feel free to go back and watch the replay you know, video so that you can kind of listen to what we shared at the start. So the first thing, write down your core values. 
it's important for both partners, both parents to be sure about the values they want to instill in their children. If it's education, how do you instill the value of education? Are you interested in the education? Are you supportive of the education? Are you excited about uh, their progress in education when they do well? You know, those are the ways they will know that our family values education. So put down the values. Secondly, uh, develop a good relationship with your children or child because without a good relationship, you can't influence them. There will be rebellion. Yes, because children will not learn if there is no relationship between you and them. Thirdly, talk about your values continuously. Raising up kids is not a one-time thing. So we don't talk to them once and move on and never talk to them again. We have to be talking to them continuously all the time until they leave home. So it's, it's no giving up whatsoever. Even when they fail, even when they disappoint, we don't give up. We talk to them, we turn a new leaf and give them another opportunity to prove themselves. Thirdly, talk to them about why you hold on to those values. Fourthly, talk to them about living out, sorry, number four, leave out uh, your values and stand by your values, defend your values at all times. Number five, encourage them by pointing out the moments when you, they have lived out the values. Praise them. Read books is finally, watch movies, expose them to mentors that have the values you want your child to, um, to, to hold on to or to instill in your children. Okay, so we have written a few on the board so the children can read them, mostly on behavior. Absolutely. Respect. You respect each other in this home. We don't speak rudely to, 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 to adults in this home. We stand up for adults to sit down. You know, so thank you very much, Jennifer, for sharing that. There is so much. It would definitely help if we put those values up, up on the board. There is something called the family uh, mission statement I read about in the seven habits of highly effective families. You know, you could come up with a, a family mission statement that you sit down together as a family, you know, from during a family meeting, come up with those values and paste them on the wall in the kitchen or in, in a sitting room or a communal area. And we keep repeating those values. We look at them and when children fall short, we come back, we remind ourselves of those values. Even as adults, when they're there on the wall, it helps us as well because sometimes we tend to break rules even as, as parents. But having them in the visible area, we hold each other accountable. You know, we hold our kids accountable. They hold us accountable and they remind us as well when we break or we don't stand by our values. So, um, if there are any questions, contributions, please put them down. I just thought it's it's really my passion because a lot is going on wrong with, with our children within the community. And I think there is a core issue there of values. And I think a lot of parents are not certain about the values they want to stand by or hold on to or instill in their children. So thank you very much for joining us so please add your comments even when you know i've gone off just add your comments you could if you have questions if you have contributions you know just please add it there so you have a wonderful end of the week and by the grace of god we will be back again next thursday have a great night bye bye